Hello, everybody. This is Bernie Strom, and welcome to my YouTube channel. And we are here for round two of Field of Dreams Baseball here, finishing up the last week of May. And Buckshot's the first one in the stadium tonight. Thank you very much. Get a comfortable seat. We'll watch the end of the month unfold as there are four terrific races going on in Field of Dreams second season baseball. And Yoko is here. Nice to see you, Yoko. In the Earth Division, as we review, Dallas is in first place, 28 and 18, a game and a half ahead of Liverpool, three games out of Berlin, and Hagerstown is in the mix, four and a half games back. Win Division, Chico's off to a great 32 17 start, 653 winning percentage, five games ahead of Lehigh, and Cleveland and San Francisco starting to fall back. Fire Division, Canada once again on top, 33-16, three and a half ahead of Lancaster, two behind, two ahead in the loss column, and seven ahead of my team, Vegas. However, only five behind in the loss column. And the Water Division, Hadley Lake and Mid-Michigan battling it out, 29-19 Hadley Lake, 28-19 Mid-Michigan. Tampa Bay just slightly back at 22 and 26. Let's look at the schedule for today. MV comes in. Thank you, MV. That was a great trade we just made. It'll be if it'll be done tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to my new player. I hope Matt Thornton finds a home in your bullpen. On the 29th of May, we start playing this game. Chico's in Dallas, and let's. Without any further ado, let's just autoplay the games and get to the one we're going to play today. Chico's gets clobbered by Dallas at home, 12-4. to 4. Avery the winner. Sutton the loser. McGriff hit his fourth home run. We now move on to Edmonton at Tampa Bay. Edmonton defeats Tampa Bay, 6-4. to 4. Russell the winner. Cheeseboro the loser. Long Island at Cleveland, 7-2 Cleveland victory at home. Owen, the winner. Flanagan, the loser. Lehigh in Berlin. Lehigh has a chance to pick up a game on Chico's, but they don't. They lose to Berlin, 5-4 to four in 12 innings. Stoudemire, the winner. Sato, Sato, the loser. Liverpool at Teville. Liverpool looking to... Uh, keep pace with Dallas, and they do squeak by Teville ten to nine in a slugfest in eleven innings. Henke the winner, Bolin the loser, Beltre three for six, a double and a stolen base. Chicago at Vegas. Chicago squeaks by Vegas in Vegas in twelve innings. Go Kenny the winner, Brewer the loser. Roush, 5-5, five to five, two home runs for his 10th home run of the season. Manchester at home against D-Gens. D-Gens defeats Manchester. Beckett throws a shutout, 7 to nothing. He's now 3-3. Three and three. Perry the loser, 4-3. and three. Lajouet, 2 for 4, his 7th home run of the year. Florence at St. Pete, 5-2. to two. St. Pete defeats... Florence at home, Johnson the winner, Riho the loser, Hadley Lake at Canada, and this is the game we're going to play right now, so let's go down to the field. Put in the Hadley Lake lineup, Rube Waddell, a strikeout pitcher today. We're going to see some strikeouts against Chris Carpenter. The lineups are in.
Welcome to Briggs Stadium for tonight's game between Hadley Lake and Canada. It promises to be a battle between two solid teams. Canada has won eight of their last ten. Rube Waddell will start for Hadley Lake. He's made 11 starts on the year. He's 7-3 and three with an ERA at 2.79. His first start against Canada. He'll be opposed by Chris Carpenter. He's made nine starts on the year. He's 5-1 with an ERA of 2.81. This should be a great game. His first start against Hadley Lake, it's 56 degrees, wind speed 27 miles per hour right to left. This ball is going out in the left field. There's a light rain. If uh, Canada gets some of those fly balls up in the air, they're going to have a high-scoring game. Play ball! For Hadley Lake, Ty Cobb leads off in center field. Sizemore at second, batting second. Brett at third, batting third. Veach in left, batting fourth. York at first, batting fifth. Roger Maris in right field, batting sixth. McFarland catching, batting seventh. Kessinger, the slick fielding shortstop, batting eighth. And Keeler, the designated hitter, batting ninth. In the outfield for Canada, Rocky Calavito in left. Ricky Henderson in center. Al Kaline in right. Infield left to right, we have Ken Boyer, Roy Smalley, Ben Zovris, Albert Pujols, catching Ted Simmons, Chris Carpenter pitching. Ty Cobb steps into the batter's box on the left side. Then we're underway. Cobb hits a ground ball to Zovris to Pujols for the out. Well hit ball, but right at Ben Zovris. Ted Sizemore comes to bat to face Carpenter. He hits a slower ground ball to Pujols, but he's going to take it himself unassisted. Two up, two down for George Brett. Brett batting from the left side. Here's the pitch from Carpenter. That ball's smacked in the left field. Brett is going to slide into second base with his 13th double of the season. And Hadley Lake has a runner in scoring position. Two outs for Bobby Veach, who's hitting 318 on the season. Eight home runs, 26 runs batted in. He bats on the left side. Brett takes his lead. Carpenter glances back at him, looks at him again, paying a lot of attention to Brett at second base. Here's the pitch. And he struck him out. The first half of the first inning is over. Hadley Lake fails to score. We go to the bottom of the first with the A's due up. Batting order for Canada. Henderson in center batting first. Kaline in right batting second. Pujols at first batting third. Rocky Calavito at batting fourth and left. Sandoval the DH batting fifth. Simmons the catcher batting sixth. Batting seventh, Ken Boyer at third. Eighth is Zobrist at second, and Roy Smalley, the shortstop, batting ninth. That is a deep lineup. There isn't a break in there for the pitcher, Rube Waddell. Ricky Henderson steps in. First pitch. He struck him out, so it was at least the third pitch as Al Kaline hitting 232 with a dozen home runs and 36 RBIs. Down the left field line, it's going to be backhanded by Veach. K-Line's headed for second. The throw, he slides, he's safe. And K-Line, with his ninth double of the year, has Canada has a runner in scoring position with only one out. And the dangerous Albert Pujols, a 263 hitter with 15 home runs, 37 RBIs. Waddell into the windup, the pitch. That ball's hit on the ground to Kessinger. He's going to toss to York for the out. K line is going to go to third. And we have two away. K line 90 feet from scoring. Rocky Calavito coming to bat. 234 hitter, nine home runs, 21 runs batted in. Wardell throws. And there's a pop-up to the infield. 
Kessinger calling everybody off. Puts it away for the out. We're off to the top of the second. No score. Carpenter will face York Maris and McFarlane. York only hitting 161. However, the qualification is, is that he's hit 14 home runs. So he hasn't had a lot of hits, but the ones he's had have been out of the ballpark. That ball is out of here. That one only took a minute as York hits number 15, and Hadley Lake takes a one nothing lead. Home run number 17, excuse me. He had 16 home runs. My eyesight failed me on that one. 17 home run. It traveled 346 feet. And as you can see here, he's got 29 hits on the year. 17 of them are home runs. That's a home run every 10 times at bat. That's Babe Ruth territory. Carpenter now to face Roger Maris. Speaking of Babe Ruth, Roger Maris, obviously, in 1961, broke, Roger, uh, broke Babe Ruth's 60 home run season record with his 61st home run against none other than the Boston Red Sox in the last game of the season off Tracy Stallard. However, in this iteration of baseball, Maris is only hitting 181, I think that says, with eight home runs. Carpenter throws. That ball's hit on the ground in the left field for a base hit. He's going to bring that 181 average up a little bit. He's now at 188 as McFarland comes to the plate. Mike is only hitting 155. Two home runs, nine runs batted in. And Carpenter strikes him out for his second strikeout of the game. One out. Don Kessinger, slick fielding shortstop, not known for his hitting, but he is hitting 248 with a couple of home runs and 16 RBIs on the season. That ball's hit to third. Boyer up with it. He's going to throw all the way across the diamond. Pujols <clears throat> grabs it. Two away with Roger Maris advancing to second base. He's in scoring position for Willie Keeler, the DH. Keeler hitting 312 on the season. When your ninth hitter hits 312, you have a good lineup. Carpenter throws. And there is another ground ball to Boyer. Boyer up with it. Over to first for the out. We head to the bottom of the second inning with Hadley Lake leading one nothing. Bottom of the second, Sandoval, Simmons, and Boyer to face Rube Wardell. Wardell this season has pitched 91 innings. He has 137 strikeouts. He's done that with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. And here's the pitch to Sandoval. Strikeout number two. You're going to see a lot of those today. Ted Simmons hitting 245, nine home runs, 31 runs batted in. He walks him, runner goes to first. First walk of the evening for Waddell. He will face Kenny Boyer, a 190 hitter. Four home runs on the season. There's a fly ball in the left field. That's up in that 27 mile an hour wind, and that is in the upper deck home run number five for Kenny Boyer. And Canada has a 2 1 lead. Home run number five, 349 feet. Wind assisted that 27-mile-an-hour win right to left. Help that one get out of here. As if Canada needed any help hitting home runs. Wardell now to face, uh, Wardell now to face Ben Zobris. Zobris, 244, 
Eight home runs, 27 runs batted in. Here's Waddell's pitch. That ball's hit in the left field, and it will fall in front of each for a base hit. Zobris rounds first, goes back to the bag. Third hit of the game for both teams. Canada, however, has a one-run lead, 2-1. to one. Zobrist at first, a threat to steal. Roy Smalley hitting 262 with 11 home runs. And when your la- number nine hitter hits 11 home runs, you hit a lot of home runs. Ground ball off the pitcher, Kessinger to Sizemore for one. That's a 1-6-4-3 double play if you're scoring at home. We go to the top of the third, 2-1 Canada. Hadley Lake will send the top of his order, Cobb, Sizemore, and Brett to face Carpenter. Cobb walked, oh, grounded a second in the first. That was a hard ground ball. I remember it now. He's going to hit it up in the air. Ricky Henderson backing up a tiny bit for the out. Ted Sizemore grounded a third his first time up. The pitch. Grounder to short. Smalley, easy play over to first. Pujols. Puts it away for the out, two up, two down, and George Brett, who tripled, I don't, I who doubled it in the first inning. Sorry, don't have to look that up. Here's Carpenter's pitch. That ball's hit on the ground to Zobris. He's in, tosses it under, headed to Pulholtz for the out, three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the third. Canada lead, Hadley Lake, two to one. Waddell to face the top of Canada's order, Henderson, K-Line, and Pujols. Henderson struck out appropriately for Waddell in the first inning. Foul ball to the left side. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. And he strikes out again as Waddell seems to have Henderson's number. Al K-Line doubled his first time up. And Waddell, pitching carefully to him, walks him. Now Albert Pujols with the 262 average and his 15 home runs. He grounded a short. K-Line went to third his first time up. Two walks in a row. Two runners on. Rocky Calavito comes to the plate. That's one thing Sean, the manager of Canada, really respects. He likes players that know how have a good eye and take bases on balls, puts runners on. Colavito, his first time up, popped to short. He struck him out. Two strikeouts, two walks in the inning. Pablo Sandoval, who struck out his first time up. The pitch. That ball's hit up the middle. Sizemore backhands it to Rudy York for the out. Inning is over. We go to the fourth. 2-1 Canada. Carpenter will face the middle of Hadley Lake's order, Veach, York, and Roger Maris. Veach struck out his first time at the plate. This time he hits a fly ball to center field that Henderson hardly has to move. Puts it away. One down. Well, Rudy York slammed his 17th home run of the year his last time up. Let's see what Carpenter can do with him now. Here's the pitch. There's a grounder to Boyer at third. Up with it across the diamond to Pujols for the out. Two up, two down in the top of the fourth. Roger Maris. Roger Maris, I believe, had a single his first time up, and he did. Grounded a pool. He's going to take that himself to the bag. 
Steps in the bag. Roger Maris is out. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 2-1 Canada. Simmons, Boyer, and Zobris to face Wardell. Simmons walked his first time up. Number five for Wardell. Whoops. Hit the wrong button as Boyer comes up. And he had a two-run homer. It was in the upper deck. His first at bat. This time he grounds to second. Sizemore behind the bag to York. Two up, two down. Bottom of the fourth. Ben Zobris singled to left his first time up. He's going to hit a grounder to George Brett. He's going to throw it across the diamond. Get Zobris by a couple of steps. We're heading to the top of the fifth. Like most uh, Field of Dreams games, we have a close 2-1 game. 2-1 game. Only three hits for both teams, and neither team has committed an error. Top of the fifth, bottom third of the order, McFarlane, Kessinger, and Keeler do up against Carpenter. McFarlane struck out his first time up. He hits him. Hit by pitch, McFarlane trots down to first. Kessinger, Kessinger grounded to third his first time up. Here's Carpenter's pitch. He's going to hit a slow ground ball. The sm small, he steps on the bag. He may or may not. He holds on to it, does not throw to first, and cannot get the speedy Kessinger, who now is on first base. One down for Willie Keeler. Willie Keeler. Grounded to third. The pitch. Well, both pitches have shown a little wildness in this game as Carpenter hit a, hits a batter and walks a batter and now has runners on first and second. For Ty Cobb, arguably, and you could make this argument, even though he's only hitting 312, the best hitter in the league. Okay, here we go. Carpenter gets the sign. Talking about losing it. He's now walked the bases. Hit hit batsman in two walks. Carpenter finds himself with the bases loaded for Ted Sizemore. I'm guessing Carpenter would prefer pitching to Sizemore with the bases loaded and one out than Ty Cobb with two runners on. Carpenter gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Oops. That's the pitch. That's the replay. I hit the, hit the wrong button. I do that once or twice a game. Let's hit the right button. And there's a fly ball in the left field. Colavito under it. Kessinger tagging up. He's heading for home. Colavito's not even going to throw home. Runner's going to score. Game's tied at two. Cobb still at first, Keeler at second. George Brett, 268 hitter comes up. He's doubled to left and grounded to second in this game. Carpenter, his third walk of the day. He's had three walks and a hit batsman this inning. Bases loaded for Bobby Veach. Veach hitting 314 with eight home runs. Here's Carpenter's pitch. That ball's hit up the middle. That's going to be in to center field for a base hit. Ty Cobb is going to round third, score right behind Keeler. That's three runs come in in the inning, and Hadley Lake takes a 4-2 lead here at Canada's home ballpark as Carpenter's already thrown 77 pitches here through four and two-thirds innings, and he's still in trouble because he's got still has two runners on for Rudy York. We all know that Rudy York has 
hit a home run and grounded to third today. York with 17 home runs, and there's the end of Carpenter. Joe Osha, I can't pronounce the name, so you guys are just going to have to read it. Seven games he's pitched in this year, 19 innings. He has a record of 1-0 and an ERA, respectively, 2.84. He's a right-hander. will face York. York steps in. Here's the pitch. He struck him out. The inning is over, but the damage is done. Three runs. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, Hadley Lake, four runs, four hits, no errors. Canada, two, three, and oh. Smalley leads off against Waddell. Top of the order follows Henderson and Kaline. Number six for Waddell. I told you we were going to see a lot of that today. I believe Henderson has struck out twice. Yes, he has. Now he's struck out three times. Number seven for Waddell as the crowd starts to boo Ricky Anderson. He doesn't hear that very often. Al Kelline has doubled and walked today. Waddell's pitch. <clears throat> and he's walked again. Kaline at first. Pujols, 262 hitter. I think he walked last time up, I seem to remember. Grounded his short his first time up, walked last time. That ball's going to be out of here. It's gone. Pujols, number 16. With the wind blowing out to left field, this is just what we thought it was going to be. Four to four. The game is tied. Pujols, 354 feet. Home run number 16. And it's a new ball game. Waddell now to face Rocky Colavito, who's popped a short and struck out. That one is fly deep to left, but Veach is going to put that away for the out. We go to the top of the six. This game is tied. There's fours all around. Four runs, four hits, no errors. Four left on base for Hadley Lake so far today. And the Canada A's, four runs, four hits, no errors, only three left on base. These are two first-place teams fighting it out against one another in separate divisions in the same league. <clears throat> As we approach the end of May in Field of Dreams Season 2, top of the sixth, Maris McFarlane and Kessinger to face whatever that pitcher's name is that I can't pronounce. Roger Maris walks. He's on first. It's the pitcher's first walk. What am I going to call him? I'm going to call him Joe. It's Joe's first walk of the game. McFarlane comes to bat. He's struck out. He's been hit by a pitch. Here's Joe's pitch. That ball's lined right to Smalley. It's short. They're going to nail Maris at first. That is a line-out double play. Maris was caught leaning the wrong way. Great play by Rui Smalley, even though it didn't say great play. 202 down now all of a sudden. Kessinger coming up. Grounded to third and grounded to short. That ball is hit in the center field, but just over the glove of Zobris. And that double play means something as that's a base hit for Don Kessinger. Willie Keeler. Today, Willie Keeler is grounded to third and walked. Joe's pitch. Fly ball deep in the right field, but that wind has caught it. K-line comes in, puts it away for the out. We go to the bottom of the sixth, tied at four. Waddell today has pitched 
uh, five innings, struck out seven and walked four. Pablo Sandoval struck out and grounded the second his last time up. Puts it in the air to Cobb in center field. He puts it away for the out, one down. Ted Simmons, Ted Simmons walked and struck out today. The pitch by Waddell. Number eight, Waddell puts him down, swinging. Ken Boyer, we know what Ken did. He had a two-run homer in the second and grounded to second his last time up. It's raining, rain delay. Check your pitchers. Seventy-five minute rain delay. They're ready to go. Waddell is extremely tired, and Joe, whoever his name is, very tired. Well, if I hit this computer button, it should replace Waddell, and it does. And I'm sure Canada is happy to get rid of Waddell as he was mowing him down. Steve Ming Mingori has coming into pitch. He's pitched in 12 games this season, 11 innings, allowed 10 hits, struck out five, walked four, 245 ERA, and is 0-1 with three saves. He will face Boyer now after that 75-minute rain delay. Boyer hits a base hit in the left field. Feech has it, throws it in. Boyer starts the first at bat after the rain delay with a base hit and Ben Zobris who today is single to left and grounded to third here's the pitch that ball's hit to York at first he's going to take him himself to end the inning we go to the top of the seventh inning all tied at four another close game here in the Field of Dreams League this is one hell of a close league. There are teams that are very close to one another. For Hadley Lake, they will send the top of the order, Cobb, Sizemore, and Brett to face. Well, let's see who they're going to face. They're going to face Steve Ontiveros. Steve Ontiveros, 14 games this season, 25 innings. 13 strikeout, 8 walks, 497 ERA, and a 3 and 1 record with a save. Let's see how he does with Ty Cobb today. Ty Cobb is grounded a second, flied to center, and the last time up he walked. He hits a long ball into right field, but K line tracks it down for the out. One away, top of the seventh. Ted Sizemore. Ted Sizemore was on my Vegas team. I traded him to Hadley Lake earlier, actually preseason, before the season started. He's grounded a first, grounded a short, and flied deep to left. You get the ball up in the air to left field, it's going to be deep no matter who hits it. That ball is a pop-up in the infield. Smalley calling everybody off, steps out into the outfield grass, puts it away for the out. Two away. George Brett. Brett's doubled, grounded out, and walked his last time up. That ball's hit into right field. K-line in foul territory can't reach it. One ball, two strikes to George Brett. Here's Ontiveros' pitch. That ball's hit on the ground to Boyer at third. He's up with it. Going to throw to first, but it's going to be just in time as George Brett thrown out by a half a step.
Here in the bottom of the seventh, the bottom of the order, Smiley, number nine hitter, then the top of the order, Henderson and Kaline to face Mingori, who replaced Waddell after the 75-minute rain delay. Here's the pitch to Smalley. He hits a bounding ball to George Brett. Easy play for George over to York for the out. One down. Ricky Henderson, for one player, Ricky Henderson's happy to see Waddell leave. He struck out three times. He hits the ground ball up the middle. Kessinger's going to have to hurry. He is out. Good play by Don Kessinger. Two away here in the bottom of the seventh. Mingori to face Al Kaline. Al Kaline has doubled, walked twice today, been on base all three times. Here's the pitch. He's going to be on base. No, what a great play by Kessinger. Those 10 rated shortstops are hard to find, but they are a lifesaver. That's great play number 16. We go to the top of the eighth inning, still tied at four. That sure looked like a base hit when he hit it. Want to take a minute and thank everybody for coming into the ballpark today. World's worst game ahead to be here. It's his team. Dwayne March is here. Check Dwayne March's YouTube channel for some great programming. Dave Lando. Thank you for coming by, Dave. SGJ Jamie's in the ballpark tonight. MV is in the ballpark. Hope you're still up. It's the middle of the night where you live. Mike Silva is here. And is that it? Yoko checked in earlier. I hope he's still here. Along with the first man in the ballpark was Buckshot. Here we go. Top of the eighth inning. Heart of the Hadley Lake order. Veach, York, and Maris to face Antaveras. Here's the pitch. That hard, hit hard to Zobris, who gets it to Pujols for the out. One down. Rudy York. Rudy York. Homered, grounded the third, and struck out. That ball's hit into left field. Base hit. Maybe Rudy York's coming out of that funk he's been in. He's been hitting home runs, but no, nothing else. Roger Maris steps into the left-handed batter's box. He grounded a single, grounded the first, and he walked his last time up the pitch. He struck him out. Two out. York still at first. And Mike McFarlane hitting a meager 151. Hitting from the right side. Here's the pitch. He walked him. Never good to, to walk a 151 hitter. Particularly when the next hitter is hitting 100 points higher. Don Kessinger. Hitting 250, he's grounded to third, grounded to short, and singled his last time up. On Tavares's pitch, that ball is hit into right field. K-line routine play, puts it away for the out. We head to the bottom of the eighth, still tied at four. Mingori. Has a bit left, as the computer manager finds out. He will face the heart of Canada's order, Pujols, Colavito, and Sandoval. Pujols grounded a short, walked, and hit a two-run homer his last time up. And we are going to have a new pitcher. Howard... Empke, I would think you pronounce that, from the 1917 season. He's only had one appearance this season, pitched an inning and a third of scoreless ball. He did allow a hit, however, he and, but he did strike out two. Let's see what he can do with Albert Pujols. There's a ball up in the air again in the left field. What will happen? Veach will put it away at the warning track, and someone is injured. 
It is Albert Pujols. He's out for the rest of the game. We'll have to check on him at the end of the broad at the end of this game to see how long that injury is going to last. As Rocky Colavito comes to bat, Colavito popped a short, struck out, and flied shallow down the left field line. Emke's pitch, he struck him out. Well, this guy's only gotten a one game for Hadley Lake, but he looks pretty good so far. Two down. Pablo Sandoval struck out, grounded out, and fly deep to left center field. You Like I said, you get the ball up in the air in left field, it's going to be deep. Ground ball to Brett, but it's going to be an infield hit as Brett's going to commit his sixth error of the season. First error of the game for either team. That brings up the switch hitting Ted Simmons. Simmons walked and struck out twice today. He hits the ball up the middle. And it's going to find its way into center field. Sandoval is rounding second. He's going to third. Cobb throws. And he's safe. Boy, that Pablo Sandoval can sure move for a fat guy. And he slid into third under the tag of the third baseman, George Brett. Kenny Boyer, two for three on the day. He homered in the second to put the A's ahead two to one and is grounded out. And he lined a single his last time up. He's going to pop it up in the infield. Kessinger calling everybody off. He puts it in his glove to end the threat by Canada. We go to the top of the ninth. Four runs, six hits, one error for Hadley Lake. Four runs, six hits, no errors for the Canada A's. Let's see who's going to play first base. Norm Cash, so... Mike Silva, you were wrong. Here comes Mark McGuire is not correct. Ontiveros will face Zobris. Excuse me, Ontiveros will face Zobris is on the other team. Keeler, Cobb, and Sizemore here in the top of the ninth inning in Briggs Stadium, Canada's home field. Keeler grounded a third, walked, and flied out his last time up. Keeler grounds the ball to Boyer at third. To Norm Cash for the out. One down. Ty Cobb. Here's a guy you want to keep off the bases. Cobb has, did I see Cobb has a six-game hitting streak, and it's in jeopardy because he's grounded the second flight to center, walked, and flight down the right field line. He has a six-game hitting streak if he's going to. Extend it. It's going to be now. Ground ball. Zobris gets it. And Cobb is out. Two down. Top of the ninth. And Cobb's hitting streak is in jeopardy as Ted Sizemore steps up to the plate. Right hand and hitting Sizemore. Grounded out twice. Flied out once. Popped up once. Aunt Tavares is going to have to face a pinch hitter. That ball is blooped in the left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. There's the news from my computer. We don't want to see that. Lind on first base. Jose Lind this year has played in 10 games. He's had 14 at-bats. He's had five hits. He's batting. 357. And that was the right move. He is on first. He's a fast runner. George Brett. Stepping in from the left side, he's double grounded a second, walked, grounded a third his last time up. Here's the pitch. He's the throws to first to keep Lynn close. Two outs. I'm not sure they would send him, but let's see what happens. Brett hits a slow roller to Smalley at short. Going to flip it to Zobrist for the out. We head to the bottom of the ninth. 
We're tied at four. Empty to face Zobrist. Smaller than the top of the order, Ricky Henderson. Ex going into the bottom of the ninth and extra innings against Canada is a tough job. Now, Canada will have two attempts from this point on for every one attempt Hadley Lake has to win this game. Hopefully, from Vegas's point of view, they can do it. But that's a fly ball to Maris in right field. No, it's a put out. I misread it. The first baseman York puts it away for the out. I'm I'm an impartial announcer, but I'm rooting for Adley Lake since I'm chasing Canada. Roy Smalley up, one down. Smalley bangs it to directly at George Brett. Doesn't have to move. Two down here in the bottom of the ninth for Ricky Henderson. Three strikeouts today. Emke throws. That ball is a slow roller to first. Henderson, a quick runner, flips to Emke. We're going to the 10th. All tied at four. Well, since I'm in Las Vegas, it's only quarter of eight. It's better for me, but all those people on the East Coast, and then MV in Europe, I would say it's getting late. Veach, York, and Maris to face Antaveras. Grounded to first. Cash up with it. Steps on the bag for the out. One down, Rudy York. Got to be careful with him. He's homered. Grounded to third, struck out and singled his last time. The pitch it is a hard grounder to Smalley. He backhands it, cross the diamond to Cash for the out. Two up, two down for Roger Maris, who grounded a single his first time up, grounded to first, walked and struck out his last time. There's a long fly ball to center field. That ball is gone. That ball went out of here in a flash. Roger Maris hits a home run here in the top of the 10th. Hadley Lake takes the lead. Home run number nine for Roger Maris. That traveled 376 feet. Makes no sense because center field in Briggs Stadium is further than 376. But it's just a computer program. Here we go. 5-4, Hadley Lake, Ontiveros, who's pitched great up until now. He gave up that home run. Mike McFarland steps in. Ontiveros gets the sign. And there's going to be a new pitcher. Maris chases Ontiveros. Billy Taylor comes in. It's 13 games this season, 16 innings. 13 hits, 20 strikeouts. He's a big strikeout guy. Only five walks, 386 earned run average. He faces McFarland, who today struck out, hit by a pitch, lined to short, and then walked. He strikes him out. The inning is over. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Hadley Lake, 5-4. Emke, who's thrown 33 pitches today, will face Kaline Cash and Colavito. So if Hadley Lake is going to win this game, they're going to earn it because these are three really great hitters. Kaline doubled, walked twice, and lined to short. Here's Emke's pitch. Kaline hits a ground ball. Kessinger scoops it up. Over to York for the out. One down. Norm Cash coming in. Norm Cash is first time up. He came in to replace the injured Albert Pujols. Here's the pitch. Fly ball. Right center field. That ball is far. That ball is high. That ball is gone. Number three for Norm Cash. And this game is all tied in the 10th.
Norm Cash, this season, has been in nine games. He's been up six times. He's got three hits. They're all home runs. And that one traveled 379 feet. If you think Rudy York's feet was his 17 home runs in 29 hits, been up six times, three home runs, you'd think you'd find a place for the guy in the lineup. Emke facing Colavito. Colavito popped to short, struck out, flied out, and struck out again. Emke's pitch. He struck him out. Two outs. Pablo Sandoval. Struck out, grounded out, flied out, and grounded out again. Slow roll of the Lind. He's going to flip it to York. We're going to have to go to the 11th, all tied at five. Taylor will face the bottom of the order. Kessinger Keeler followed by Ty Cobb, the leadoff hitter. The pitch to Kessinger. Slow roller to Smalley. He charges and he throws to first and gets him by a step. One down. Keeler today. Grounded out, walk, flight out, and grounded to third his last time up. Grounded to third again. Boyer up with it, throws to first. Cash with the ball. Two down. Ty Cobb has a chance to extend his six-game hitting streak. If I'm not mistaken today, he is 0 for 4. Taylor's pitch. There's a bloop into right field. That's up in the air, too. That ball is going to be gone. That didn't even look like it was going to go anywhere, and it just got up there into that 27-mile-an-hour wind against the wind, and Cobb has put Hadley Lake ahead 6-5 to five with a 341-foot home run, his fourth of the season here in the top of the 11th inning. That fooled me off the bat. I don't know about the rest of you, but it really fooled me. Lind, the second baseman, batting second, steps to the plate. He came in in the ninth and singled to left. He was a pinch hitter. Mike Marshall coming in to pitch. Canada does not let any dust grow under the feet of their relief pitchers. Nine games this year, 12 innings, 12 and a third, struck out seven, walked four, an 073 ERA, one and one with six saves. George Burns coming into pinch hit. He strikes out. The inning's o inning is over, and we've seen this again. We go to the bottom of the 11th, 6-5, Hadley Lake. Mike, I can tell you, no matter how fast my chalkboard speeds up, I will always be confused. Here we go. I don't know what that says, but since it ends in ONG, I'm going to say that that pitcher is strong. He's going to face Simmons, Boyer, and Zobris. He, he might have had trouble getting through Cash, Colavito, and Sandoval, and I think Simmons, Boyer, and Zobers are good hitters, but they are not Cash, Colavito, and Sandoval. Simmons, who can certainly put the ball out of here, has walked, struck out twice, and grounded a single his last time up. Well, that's into deep right field. What's going to happen? This one's out of here, too. This game is tied again. Home run number 10 for Ted Simmons. And this game may never end. Unbelievable. What a game. 
Field of Dreams never ceases to surprise me. Game is now tied at six. Emke may be strong, but Simmons was stronger as Ken Boyer comes to bat. He started the game off for Canada with a two-run homer, then grounded out, lined a single, and popped to short. Base hit, right center field. Boyer at first. Zobris do up. That's hit number three for Boyer today. And I guess I misspoke when I said that uh, Simmons, Boyer, and Zobris were no Cash, Colavito, and Sandoval because so far they're just as good. Here's the pitch. Fly ball. Is this one going to be out of here? It is. That one's gone. The game's over. Walk off home run for Ben Zobris, and Canada wins 8 to 6. Congratulations to the Canada A's who can't stop hitting home runs. They win 8 to 6. We go to the box score. In 11 innings, 8 runs, 10 hits, no errors for Canada. 6 9 and 1 for Hadley Lake. Winning pitcher Mike Marshall. He is now 2 and 1. He only pitched a third of an inning, but he got the win. Loser Emke, oh, he's 0 and 1. He pitched 3 innings, 5 hits. Allowed four runs, all earned, struck out two, walked nobody. This home run, this park sure is a hard place to keep the ball in play. I could tell you that much. Congratulations to Sean, world's worst gamer. His team just came back and won a very exciting game. They are now 34 and 16, four games ahead of Lancaster, eight games ahead of Vegas. And they are on a hot streak. Where are we? Okay. Canada wins 8-6. to six. Lancaster at Carpathian. And there is a runtime error. That has never happened to me before. That's the same thing that happened to Mike Silver last night. And I did clean the file when it came uh, when it uh, came to me yesterday. So let's just start this game again. There's something in this file, and if I'm not mistaken, Mike wanna, might want to answer this. Was it the Carpathian game that happened on last night too? You can answer in the chat there, but let's auto do it again. It worked after he did it. 15 to 5, Lancaster destroys Carpathian. Amazing at mid Michigan. 4 2 amazing. Hamill's the winner. Brolio, the loser. In that Lancaster game, Hall was the winner and Hall was the loser, but different Halls, obviously. Hagerstown at San Francisco. Can Hagerstown keep pace? They can. They defeat San Francisco 3-2. to two. Lever to winner. Bagby the loser. Let's go to the 30th. For the 30th, we have Edmonton at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay wins 6-2. to two. Linscombe the winner. Kuzman the loser. Chico's at Dallas. Chico's holding a five-game lead over Lehigh. Dallas with a one-and-a-half game lead over Liverpool. And Chico's defeats Dallas 4-3. Briggs the winner. Tannen Hill the loser. Now DGN's facing Manchester at Manchester. And Manchester defeats them 5-2. Webb the winner. Leicester the loser. Florence at St. Pete, 5-4 Florence. Bryles the winner, Powell the loser. Long Island at Cleveland, 7-5 Long Island. Pfeffer the winner, Walsh the loser. Lehigh now, who is 5.5 behind Chico's at Berlin. They're trying to keep pace, but they won't. Berlin defeats Lehigh, 5-3. Gidry the winner, Brown the loser. That drops. 
Lehi to six games back in the division. Liverpool at Teville. 6-3 Liverpool. Matheson the winner. Pennock the loser. Hadley Lake at Canada. Hadley Lake defeats Canada 8-7. Castro over Eckersley as Hadley Lake gets a measure of revenge from last night's walk-off home run. And Edmonton now plays Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay wins 6-3. Bly Levin the winner. Oswalt the loser. Amazing at mid-Michigan. Amazing 3-2 winners. Odom over Wainwright. Hagerstown at San Francisco. San Francisco wins 7-1. Kovaleski wins. Parrott loses. Chicago at Vegas. Vegas sneaks by Chicago 3-2. Mickelson the winner 2-0. Bowery the loser 5-4. That was also in 12 innings. And I wonder if that was a walk-off home run. I'll have to check it later in the day. Two for four for McCann, the catcher, his second home run. Two RBIs. Lancaster at Carpathian. We're going to get a runtime error? No, we're going to get a 2 nothing Carpathian win as they defeat Lancaster. And we go to the last day of the month. Looks like everybody plays. Chico's now at Berlin. There's going to be a double header here for Chico's. In game one, Berlin beats Chico's six to nothing. Perez the winner, McCaskill the loser. D Jens at Dallas. Dallas wins five to two. Cy Young the winner. Joss the loser. Lancaster at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay defeats Lancaster five to two. McDowell over Tony. Tony, who I have an interest in, is now five and six. I like him in that position. Blair, two for four. And a triple, Long Island at Teville. Teville shuts out Long Island, three to nothing. Mays, the winner. Santana, the loser. Lehigh and Manchester. Let's check out Lehigh, five and a half games back. Manchester, six games back in their division. Manchester squeaks by Lehigh, 6-5. to five. Hoffman, the winner. Hands, the loser. I don't know about Hoffman, but I believe after today, Hands is leaving town. Mays, 2-4 for four with his 13th home run as we move to Liverpool at San Francisco. And San Francisco squeaks by Liverpool, 2-1. to one. Coombe, the winner. Philippe, the loser. If I'm not mistaken, Philippe's on his way out of town from Liverpool also. Second game of the day, Chico's. Six-game lead in the division, Berlin, two games behind Dallas. Berlin takes a doubleheader from Chico's, 4-3. to three. Peterson the winner. Weimer the loser. DGens at Dallas, game two. Dallas defeats DGens, 6-3, to three, and a sweep for Dallas. Maddox the winner. He's now 10-0. Jones the loser, 0-2. Amazing at mid-Michigan. Mid-Michigan shuts out amazing, 4 to nothing. Verlander over Jackson. Chicago at Vegas. Vegas defeats Chicago, 4-2. to two. Messerschmitt, the winner. Musina, the loser. We move on to Game 2, San Francisco and Liverpool. Liverpool splits the doubleheader, defeating San Francisco, 5-3. Sakati, the winner. Rogers, the loser. Edmonton at St. Pete. 8-1 to one St. Pete, Faber over Aroka. Hagerstown at Cleveland. Hagerstown 25-24, and 24, five and a half games behind Dallas. They could use a win here, and they get one, 4-2 to two over Cleveland. Benton the winner, Allrock the loser. Hadley Lake at Canada. Canada squeaks by Hadley Lake, 3-2. to two. Alexander now 9-1, Cooper 6-6. Six and six. Florence at Carpathian now for a double header. Let's get by this without a runtime error. Nope. There's something with that Carpathian file. I hope we don't have to go through the whole season with runtime errors in Carpathian file. Anyway. 
let's do the game one. That's the first time that's happened two, two in a row. We're going to go up to utilities, clean the league folder. Let's see if we can get by that game. Carpathian wins. Candelaria over Lolich. Carpathian wins 9-2. to two. Game 2 of the doubleheader. And we got a runtime error. Steve's going to have some work to do here. Let's try it one more time before I have to clean the file again. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, where's the game? There it is. We get by it. Carpathian shut out by Florence, six to nothing. Stone the winner, McGinty the loser. I can't believe we got through it, but we did. And let's go over the divisions. Dallas, one and a half games ahead of Liverpool, 31 and 19, but that is a close race. There are only two games up in the last column on Liverpool and Berlin and five games up on Hagerstown. Manchester at 500 is still in it, only six games back. Wind. Chico's still maintaining a healthy five-and-a-half game lead, four games in the last column ahead of Lehigh, eight-and-a-half ahead of Cleveland and San Francisco, but they're only five games back. I think they're all in it. We move to Canada who is playing great ball, 673, the best in the league, 35 and 17. Lancaster, three back in the loss column. They're at 29 and 20. My team starts winning about the end of May, so here they come. They're 26 and 22, seven games back, only five games back in the loss column. And finally, Hadley Lake, still a half game ahead of mid-Michigan. They've been maintaining that half game lead the entire week. Let's, uh, for the sake of uh, where's that injury report? Let's check that injury on uh, see if anybody on here we want to know about June 10th, Rusty Greer is out. Kevin Bass is out to the sixth. Matt Suey's out. Glenn Beckett's out. Most of them have come back this week. Roger Maris is out to the 12th of June. That's a couple of weeks. Zobris, for some reason, is out till June 4th. I'm not sure when that happened. But I do not see Pujols on here, so he obviously was only out for that one game. Uh, there it is there. We'll print that and get it online. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming by. I'll zip up this file, get it on to uh, Steve, and we'll talk to Steve. If somebody else talks to him tomorrow morning before I do, let him know about the Carpathian runtime error. I think that will be important. And I want to thank Mike Silver, Sean, World's Worst Gamer, for coming by. I want to thank SG Jamie, MV. Who else? We I went over this earlier, but I'm going to do it again because I really appreciate all you guys coming by watching these games. 
And we've got an active chat tonight as I keep seeing the same names. There we go. MV, I hope you're still up. You guys are in here every place. Sean, you sure like to post. Dwayne Marks was here. Thank you, Dwayne. I'm very happy for your team being in it this season. David Landau, my friend from Chicago. Thank you for coming in. Yoko, thank you for coming in. If you're still awake, I hope you sleep well. And I will want to thank Buckshot for being the first in the ballpark. And tomorrow morning for coffee, I'll see all my friends on Discord. Have a nice evening, everybody.